back in the mists of eternity before the creation before even our thoughts can truly carry us God makes a covenant with himself that he would have sons and heirs and he begins the process of creating man with that intention fully in mind in fact the, in the lamb slain before the foundation of the world God has already paid the price by which man will be lifted from his coming shame to become a son of God Adam therefore is created with all of that in mind and within the framework of God's covenant yet because he knew the depths of the coming separation God reaches his hand down into the realms of creation to leave pictures pictures of his eternal truths embedded within the natural narrative it is God my friends extending himself into the ranks of time and sense to paint for us these signposts and guide markers to call to strengthen and to encourage us on our journey home when the fullness of his hand reveals itself or when the picture he has been preparing is revealed to us then for us everything changes and we have a new season upon us you see the new season comes when the types and the shadows give way to his reality as God assembles the pieces of this picture from the eternal into the temporal he brings heavenly realities into our view and our whole world is altered like a fresh dawn breeze laden with promise it comes comes on with a rush that is both focused and sown in spread yet gathered for you see this new season begins and radiates outward from actual locations within time yet you see my friends it's not so much a place as it is a people coming together in the spirit in whom he creates those places those locations and that existence that God will then use as a sort of ground zero for bringing his eternal realities into time now that means that there are actual locations in time we're used to thinking of locations as being spatial you know a pair of coordinates on a map but this is not a spatial location this is a personal location an association of relationship so to speak you see when people are related in the spirit and fashioned into one body their lives erect those signposts that become a location in time that God comes into and fills with his portraits of eternity that location in time is called the body of Christ the place where God dwells in time where eternal realities come into our field of vision to dispel the shadows and create a new season a new reality if you will when these new seasons come they come through God's people God's house so to speak because this is the place where heaven and earth meet let me show you what I mean if I were to ask you what's the house of Windsor the Royal House of England you wouldn't say Buckingham Palace even though that's the house where they live but the house of Windsor itself is not the home that they live in it is the generations of the family presently it's Queen Elizabeth Prince Charles Prince Andrew Andrew and there are others yet it also includes the whole line from King George on down that's the house the house of Windsor it's the generations of the members and when the Word of God gives us the genealogies of Jesus this is what it is all about the Bible has two references to the genealogy of our Lord one in Matthew that confirms his lineage from Abraham through David 
making him both of the house of Abraham and of the house of David. But the one in Luke is different. The one in Luke covers 62 generations because it is meant to detail the house of the living God from creation to fulfillment. From Christ to Adam. From Adam to Christ. 62 generations. Because in the first one, we have the first man through whom all others would come and fall. And in the last, 62 generations later, you have the Lamb, the new man who redeems the first one. And in redeeming the first one, he redeems the whole house of God and raises up a people unto God in accordance with his covenant. Throughout all of these generations, my friends, we are given pictures of God's covenant and his plans for its completion in the lives and interactions of these people. That's why these genealogies are here, to paint a picture, a picture of a house, if you will. Now there's a reference in Genesis of how God created woman out of man. He put Adam into a deep sleep. We all know the story. He removed a rib from his side. He made Eve, brought her to the man, and Adam said, This is now flesh of my flesh, bones of my bones. She shall be called woman, because she's taken out of the man. Now, if that's all we know, then the story is elegant and poetic, but it holds no mystery, no picture of God's eternal plan for this very being he has just created. And that's about as much as we could say for it. And yet, we find in Paul, in Ephesians, quoting from the book of Genesis in this same spot. For this reason a man will leave his father and mother to be united unto his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Then he says, this is a profound mystery, but I'm speaking about Christ and the church. So what he's telling us is that the reason that God created woman in the manner in which he did is somehow tied up in the revelation of a mystery. For you see, when God did it, he was working from the full picture, the completely assembled picture of all things in eternity. For he knows all things from before the beginning. But here, here, in the garden, in this act, he was painting something into time in a way that we might understand. Having said that, what is it within this picture, my friends, that we need to understand? When you search the scriptures and compare the pictures and realize that there are only two times in the word that speak of a man's side being opened then the picture begins to gain some clarity. Whose side was opened in the second reference? The answer, you all know, we all know, it was the side of our Lord. And when his side was opened, the scriptures say a new and living way was opened through the veil, that is to say, through his flesh. He's telling us that in the first snapshot of this message, the shadow picture so to speak. God is bringing the woman out of the side of the man. But when the second Adam appears and dies on the cross and the soldier pierces his side, it is akin, even an echo, of God piercing the side of Adam. Through one was the bride brought into creation and through Christ, the second Adam, will she be re reunited with him again, flesh of his flesh, bone of his bone, and spirit of his spirit, according to that eternal covenant of God. But the point is, for a woman to be taken out of the man, that's not natural, but yet it happened within the natural. When you see these things, these are for signs. They are pictures of eternity painted into time for us by the hand of God to guide us and to tell us of these eternal realities. Once you have this understanding and you look back in scriptures, 
you will see all kinds of things that are in time, but yet seem not to be of time. In the word, a lamb was slain when Abel atoned for his sins before God, and that lamb was acceptable unto God. You take this event, this picture, and you move it further, further down the line, through the people of the house of God. And in the situation of Abraham and Isaac, the boy is not sacrificed, but he is offered. Yet, through the divine intervention, a ram is caught by the horns in the thicket, and the ram is offered. Substitutional sacrifice is here pictured for the first time. Then we come to the time of Israel in Egypt during the visitation of the plagues and the covering of Israel by the blood of the Lamb, painting for us a new paradigm of understanding. Now the question here is that we must understand what picture is God painting? Well, my friends, John the Baptist tells us loud and clear what it is. Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. And it is by these pictures, my friends, pictures painted for us by the hand of the living God, it is these that bring the reality of the eternal into our lives of time and sense. When our Lord brings an eternal reality into time, He means to transport you, to transport us to another place in the Spirit, to a higher place in God by the reality that He is bringing. But my friends, He will show you that reality always by the ordinary and the commonplace, the bread and the wine. When the eternal comes, it manifests itself in time and space in a way that is easily apprehended by all those who are His. For instance, when the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, common and ordinary symbols were routinely used to picture the re eternal realities. He took the simple, yet the essential things of life, bread and wine, and infused them with a meaning that is both transcendent and meant to reveal to us His living eternal truth. And when this living truth comes into the venue of the natural, into our world of time, it is demonstrated, illustrated and presented always in very touchable, normal, everyday things. Things like life and death, blood and dust, water and earth, bread and wine. The resurrection of Lazarus is a supernatural act placed within the natural to paint a picture of Christ as both the Lord of life and as the God of the living, not the dead. He transformed water into wine as almost his first, first official act, so to speak, to demonstrate the transforming power of his blood to change the contents of these, these earthen vessels into the flowing bounty of God himself. The fact that it was done at a wedding gives even more texture to the painting. For as we all know, the whole story within the word of God begins and ends with a wedding. In the beginning he made man, and from him he made a helpmat, helpmate, and declared that they shall be one flesh. As it is written, he who has the bride is the bridegroom. When our Lord breaks loaves and fish and feeds a multitude, that is not natural, but that's taking the normal things of earth, what people eat, what people are familiar with, what is the very normal stuff of life, and turning it into a light that reflects eternal glory. For this is the way of God. These are the things that the body needs to understand. Why did he feed the 5,000? To show us, to paint a picture of us, to us, of him as the bread of life, 
come down out of heaven just as the manna in the wilderness. And in doing so, he collapses the 1,500 years between his day and the day when Moses led Israel through the wilderness. He collapses it and it becomes today. And in that day, as in every day, we see the eternal truth, the eternal portrait that he alone is the sustainer of life. In much the same way, with the piercing and opening up of his side, he collapsed all of history, all of the separation and enmity between God and his people. Through the one, the woman entered into the world. Through the other, the bride is reunited to her first love. You see, my friends, the two become one flesh, and this becomes the mystery spoken of in Ephesians. Behold, I show you a mystery, but I am speaking about Christ and the church. All of these twists and sharp portraits of the eternal, the supernatural, set within the natural, are the signposts of God. They are intended for us, and these are where the mysteries are hidden, my friends. When God paints us a picture, that picture is like a shadow inviting us in until God brings it into our reality. Now until the reality of the picture tells us we often we often have a confused idea of just what reality is. But when God brings his picture of truth and it comes into our reality it explains all the shadows. When God said in these last days I will restore the hearts of the fathers to the children. When he speaks to the prophets rend your heart and not your garments. Or be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with the wine and oil. God is giving us new seasons and assembling in time things that will form an eternal picture for redeeming all things of God unto God. Here, here God promised us that we would have sufficient power and authority for the demands of these days in the dark seasons of life. Now our hope, our hope comes to us and it is in that God said And through this, we are like Simeon and Anna who went to the temple every day because they received a word from God saying that they would not die until they saw the hope of Israel, until they saw the child who would deliver the nation. So because of what, so because, excuse me, <laughs> so because of what God had said, they went there every day, my friends. But you see, until the day when Jesus showed up, they went there every day in hope. Hope, based on what God had said, what God had painted, what God had given them in his pictures of eternity, inserted into our living realities. So we live and act on the basis of what God has said on these eternal pictures he has painted across time and space. And these, this is our hope until he brings forth the reality. Yet when it becomes the reality, the reality now becomes the substance. And this substance, my friends, is faith. And faith is the intent of all the pictures and portraits painted by God. For it is faith that makes you stand. And faith is how the eternal, with its truth and its kingdom, comes into us in reality. 
and in substance. Pictures, pictures of eternity, painted into time for us by the hand of the living God to guide us into all of these eternal realities. Amen. Until the next time, my friends, have a wonderful day in our risen Lord. Goodbye.